Hey, so anyway, thanks guys for checking out the video today. Um, as you saw, I'm riding with the group today, which is a little rare for me, but this is the group that I mentioned in a video um, a while back, a couple, maybe two videos ago, that I started looking, searching for some local ride groups here in the, you know, my city, Cincinnati, Ohio kind of area. So sure enough, there's a uh, website called Meetup. Com. Um, but I actually think I found this through Facebook through another scooter club or something but this is an actual motorcycle club um, that is called Greater Cincinnati Motorcyclists GMC for short okay and again if you go to meetup.com um, you can search for that group and I think there's a little over a hundred members um, of course, not all 100 members ride at the same time, so throughout the year, I don't know how many events they have a year, but I would say during the summer months, it's quite frequently, I mean, I could be wrong, but I would say several, half a dozen a month maybe, maybe not a half a dozen, but half a dozen, but I'd have to look on past events, but anyway, it's enough, trust me. So this was a ride that, was, that took place on Labor Day, um, Labor Day weekend, so this is actually Monday yesterday whenever you see this video I'm, I'm my audio is always separate um, so I'm working on changing that but in the meantime I have to live with what I have so this this happened on Monday afternoon and probably left the house about nine o'clock in the morning we met at a restaurant at 10 and then we're gonna travel and go through the windy roads of you know Mainville up to Caesars Creek Ohio and take all the back roads as you can see here it gets to the wooded area pretty quickly off the main highway and this is this is near um, I think Mainville Ohio and we'll be coming back through Loveland Ohio and there's a big bike trail that you'll see in a video coming up but uh, yeah this is my first group ride I, I rode with a couple guys like I said just my son and his friend before but I've never uh, really have ridden with an organized group like this and there was 16 bikes today so pretty interesting and I tell you what you know it, it was a combination of Harleys and um, you know Valkyries and Bergmans and Hondas I mean you name it there was all kind of really saw some cool bikes um, several Harleys the leader actually the organizer of this event um, was the one in the lead with the Harley and um, gosh my, my bike comparison looks funny you know only a little ADB 150 but I tell you what it's it it really does hold its own and I've even had guys mention after the end of the ride um, that they were surprised that I didn't have any trouble keeping up because you look at the bike I mean it's only a 150 cc even though I have it I got it up to 100, 100 I got it up to 67 before the limiter kicks in you know it'll keep up with anything on the road as long as they don't pull away and fly 90 miles an hour which nobody does this is a respectful more mature group that I ride with and they keep it the speed limit or below the whole time you know and take the corners just at a normal pace nobody's trying to lose anybody it's just a nice group to ride with and we you know we keep in the proper you know formations and you know do the signals and it, it was really enjoyable I mean I've I'm gonna definitely ride with them more but um, this was fun it took about I guess four or five hours out of my day on Labor Day but man you, you couldn't ask for more pleasant weather so this was um, a really fun experience because I got it, it, it kind of forced me to get out there and stretch my legs a bit you know instead of just riding around my neighborhood uh, this this allowed me to kind of get out there um, and just go further I, I honestly didn't even know where we were going I'm just following the bikes and I did this for hours and it was kind of different you know I could have looked at the map ahead of time but I knew it was gonna only take you know maybe three hours and we also stopped and ate you know we went to a restaurant called shooters that we'll pull up to later and I won't give away the whole video but it was a really really cool time got to meet uh, a lot of people there was actually in this group there was five new people that rode today which was amazing um, and I was one of them so I was one of five and um, you know it's it just funny how it all works out sometimes but 
Uh, the group, I think when I looked online, the group only has about 100, just a little over 100 members. Um, so yeah, check it out. If, if you do live in the Cincinnati area, this, this is kind of uh, tri-state, I would say. Cincinnati, Kentucky, Indiana, greater Cincinnati. Uh, but more, this was a little bit more north towards Mason and Lebanon that we met. But I think they meet all over and they take trips, you know, all over the place. So not all over the country, but I would say in the greater Cincinnati area, hence the greater, greater Cincinnati motorcyclists. So they keep it within the greater Cincinnati area, but some of these rides are, you know, three, four hours long. Some of them I think I read where they had some moto trips, um, camping trips, if you want to do that kind of thing. Not, I have not graduated to that level yet, but, you know, baby steps. But this was fun. Um, I'm going to stop rambling here for a minute and let you enjoy the scenery a little bit. So I wanted to talk about, um, before I forget, the, the windscreen seems to do a better job, but I notice it more when I'm going through the subdivisions and, and lower speed. I still had a lot of uh, wind on my arms and maybe the helmet area or upper chest, but that's, you know, that's because we're pretty much going 50 miles an hour most of the time or higher. Um, 
I would say I think our average speed was probably without all the stop signs and stuff. Of course, average cruising speed was anywhere, once you get going, 40 to 50, I would say, that kind of range. Um, and sometimes we'd open it up to get on a 55 stretch for a little bit of time to get to another area of the back roads. But the, the windscreen seemed to do pretty good. No, no complaints with it. Are you going to notice a dramatic, dramatic difference? Probably not. Um, but you might go on around, you know, like 40 or under, I think is where I feel it the most, which, uh, which I'm happy with. I don't do these group rides every day, of course. Um, and I'm going to get some better gear for the, you know, because when you take your, I, I understand now that you probably want to wear long sleeves when you're doing a group ride because um, not so much for protection, but also from the sun. I think uh, my arms were a little fried at the end of the day. Because you've got to figure if you're riding for two, three hours, four hours in in the sunlight, you know, you got to have some, you got to either be used to the sun already or have some protection or, but, so my arms got a little red. I never got burnt, but I do want to get some summer gear that, you know, has like the longer sleeve shirts that are meant for, like a lot of you see fishermen wear it and stuff. They're, they're kind of like a material that ref, uh, deflects sun. Now here's a couple cyclists that come up on the right and... I almost let him go because we were at, coming to a turn and the cyclist took the turn probably faster than I did so you can you saw in my mirror that oh my gosh I hope I didn't cut him off but I don't think I did I mean they were they saw us coming now like 15 bikes passed them by the time I got to them so they stood to the right but yeah you got to be careful with cyclists now the area that we're at now I think it's called Mainville you'll see this coming up when we when we uh, finally get to our destination uh, I think it's not the next stop but the stop after um, there's this huge popular bike path um, in, in Mainville Ohio so any cyclist that's listening to this now if they ever do you'll know exactly where I'm talking about and you'll see it I mean it is it looks like the Grand uh, Tour de France or something when you pull up to this I mean I've never seen as many bike shorts as I did in my life today so you'll, you'll see that coming up but um, a lot of a lot of people riding bicycles because there's a big really popular bike path around here um, coming up I would say yeah, I don't know maybe in the next 10 minutes or so but anyway yeah I, I, I learned a lot from this ride and I'll reflect on that here in a little bit as I go on but the main thing is you know it, it really the group ride really let me stretch my legs out and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would and little antsy at first like oh my gosh I've never been riding for three hours straight but we stopped we ate we took breaks it was nice I'm good. Feels good.
this is the section coming up where we're going to be hitting this this really popular cyclist um, joint. It's kind of like in Mainville, a little downtown Mainville, I believe, and it's it's really a quaint little town with a lot of you know coffee shop vibe, you know hippie youngster, um, just this vibe about it. Not really, I wouldn't say young, but there's all ranges of people, so. It's just a kind of a unique part of the city where a lot of cyclists um, get together. And like I said, I, I've not seen as many bike shorts than, than even if I was at the Tour de France. It was crazy. But it's a beautiful, you know, day. It's, it's uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, and the people come out in droves to ride bikes because it is a really cool bike trail, cyclist trail. Um, I'll try to find the name and put the link, but most people watching my channel are not really into riding bicycles so I get it it's probably a moot point um, but if I find it I'll post it on here later um, or under the description but anyway um, yeah a lot of people a lot of crowds um, a lot of people walk in and bike in the path and that's what we're going to be driving up to here shortly so you'll get a you'll get a chance to see the little city of Mainville Ohio um, the little quaint little town after we get uh, through a little bit of farmland here but Overall, it was a nice ride, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Learned a lot from the ride, um, but here's the little town of Mainville, and I don't know the population. I'm not into all the stats and, you know, get enough of that when I watch baseball. So, but it's a small town, and we pull up here pretty much just a, there's a restroom up here, and we're going to stop and take a break and, you know, have people relieve if they need to, um, but not everybody did. Yeah, I'm just not used to riding for more than, you know, I think the longest I've ever ridden this ADV 150 was maybe an hour tops. So this is very, uh, very different for me, but it was full. It was cool, I should say, not full. Anyway, here's the ride coming up where we pull over and check out the scenery. Okay.
So that was better, much better. You know, when you ride for a couple hours, I don't think it was even two hours. I would say we were probably on the road maybe an hour before we stopped, um, maybe an hour and a half. So yeah, I think um, several people had to use the uh, bathroom and things like that. So feel better now. So the next part of the ride here is just we'll finally get out of the city here and we'll go through the curves and enjoy the scenery a little bit. Um, and that's, that's a really fun part of the ride here coming up right now. I think what I noticed the most doing this ride was how, um, I, I wouldn't say in, intimidating curbs are, but how respectful I am to curbs, meaning you gotta, you gotta give them, you know, proper respect because if you're going around a curb too fast, you, a lot of people tend to break and what, when you break, that drives them off the road. So you don't want to break necessarily in a curve you want to break before you hit the curve if it feels like you're gonna hit it kind of fast or if it's coming up so you have to be really conscious and if you do break in a curve you really shouldn't do it at all but just apply a little bit of back back brake pressure and, and then the problem with riding a scooter I always forget which is the front you know which is the left which is the right so it's kind of it's a little different than a motorcycle so when I'm heading up to a curve and it looks like oh my gosh this curve looks like it's pretty tight I'll try to slow down to until I get to that curb, you know. So you don't want to be breaking real hard in the apex of the curb because that's that's what that's what runs you off the road and gets you in trouble and causes sliding. So just keep that in mind. Take the curves slow, and there's no reason to go through them, you know. Even in this group, uh, a few of the curves were, I would say, semi-aggressive, but not to the point where I was out of control. But they do make you think, and I think. The thing I learned most about this ride, as far as a physical riding, is how to learn to kind of lean and turn into the curves a little better and the apex to turn, you know, take wide, then come in tight. You know, I, I kind of tried all kind of different things, but I think you just have to more or less anything get a feel for your own bike, whether it's a motorcycle, scooter. It's all about the feel for your own bike and curves. Just don't overdo it. Just, you know, Go slow, you're in no hurry in life. There's people that were dragging pegs and stuff through these curves um, on occasion and that just, that makes me nervous because if I had a bike that I would drag a peg, you know, they, they kind of just hit the ground. I mean, chances are nothing's gonna happen, um, but that would just probably freak me out. So I have plenty of clearance clearance, so I don't have to worry about that with my scooter. Um, I never had a problem in the turns with you know in the curves with bottoming bottoming out or anything so that's a little bit different on a motorcycle when you got the pegs that hang down pretty low I, I, I heard a few people comment yeah I was grinding a little bit I, I could tell that's interesting
And now listen guys, this is very important. I wanted to make sure that, because I made a comment earlier about braking in a, in a curve. You, you don't want to brake at all in a curve unless you absolutely have to, to just kind of slow down. Just, I mean, you don't want to do it at all. But if you do, I want to make a correction that I said, just only use your back brake. That is not necessarily true, okay? So there's all kind of debate on this. What's more important is you need to know your bike, you need to get to a curve slow, and you need to brake before you hit that curve. If you don't have any other choice, then it goes on experience, applying maybe uh, gentle force on both together, but you gotta be careful, and every situation's different, so it's impossible to answer. Get out there and ride, do your curve slow, and then once you gain experience, you'll know. Never mind. It won't take my car because of. Huh? Said so it don't take my car because of the chip. I don't. I don't need it actually. I'm just gonna top it off. I got plenty.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm sorry for the long video. This is uh, almost 40 something minutes long. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, it, and I trimmed um, a lot of the fat off it, they say, because, you know, it was quite a long, you know, when you're riding for three hours or more, you, you, you want to include all of it, but you can't. It's just too much to watch. So I did, you know, the best I could as far as the, what the highlights were and, you know, how we did the stops and stuff, so you get the idea. But, yeah, it's a little longer video, so feel free to scroll through some of it. Um, but remember to do all the stuff like subscribe and like and follow and you know it's kind of silly to say it repeatedly but it does help the channel and you know this was a long video to make very tedious very time consuming um, even when you do have a process down making these videos is really really time consuming you know and I have a day job and I do this on the side but it is time consuming that's why you don't see a lot of YouTube channels out well I should say there's billions of YouTube channels, but I'm saying um, a lot of people that ride or have an interest in adventure, bikes, cyclists, they just don't have time, you know, because a YouTube channel, I'm fortunate that I'm kind of techie, so I can pick up on this stuff and, and produce it quicker than the average person, but it, it is, it is a, a time hog. So, but anyway, enough of that. It was a great ride. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things I might do more of, at least, you know, if I do it a couple times a year, you know, the, to get into the, the motorcycle club, the Greater Cincinnati Motorcyclists, I think the requirements are, I mean, it's a free thing, of course, I think the requirements are participate. You know, they just want you to participate. And it not, doesn't have to be every week, doesn't have to be every ride, but I think as long as you do one or two a year, you're in good standing. Um, they just there's a limit though as far as they're not gonna have you join the group and never ride or never say anything or I mean it's it's a camaraderie type thing so if you do check out the um, the group um, let me know and again they're on meetup.com just search for uh, Cincinnati let's see greater Cincinnati motorcyclist and you'll come across it of course for the people in other countries and other states look for those around your area uh, meetup.com I'm sure there's more groups out there than it or you can f search Facebook groups okay is another good place but <clears throat> if you do want to ride with people in your area I'm sure it's out there you got to go after it and you got to look for it and look at this I just found them what last week and I already went on a group ride with 16 bikes pretty impressive so you got to do it good luck guys and thanks for watching again and make sure you leave a comment or two appreciate you